Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Why did Allah create shaitan being all knowing and all seeing? Thank you. Well, why not? <laughs> <laughs> if Allah wanted angels, then He would have just kept creation as angels. So, the, without a catalyst to speed up a process, so in science when you want a reaction in a test tube, you put a fire and as a result of the heat of the fire, it's a catalyst, it speeds up the process that's within this test tube. So if Allah wants to grant you a degree and a station in paradise, because you can't be an angel because then there's no station, you just have the job that you've been given. So the creation and the nature of our creation is to be granted something. So as a result there has to be a catalyst and that's why shaitan is a fire. It comes in as the catalyst for Allah He creates a heat and brings out the atmosphere, brings out the, the desire of which they didn't know was in them. So our life is, is not to have those desires and just live with them, it's that, that Allah also sent guidance and prophecy. Prophecies were the prophets who come to teach us that how to subdue the bad and encourage the good. And as a result Allah will give the high stations and the rewards of paradise. We are spiritual beings sent here for a physical experience with a two-way ticket. So same for our lives, you study so that you can get a good degree and a good position in life. And if you don't study then you don't get any position and you go through the hardship of the physical world. So Allah said, now for eternity imagine that reality that you, you have all of eternity so it's best to, to study and to do our best for eternity and not to be fooled by the temporary world inshaAllah. Mm. Mm. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa uh, My question is that how come it is very difficult to do my awrad and zikr in this month of Safar? This happens every year. It's a month with a lot, uh, a lot of haybah, a lot of majestic tajalli and when negativity is around us it doesn't want us to sit and to receive these blessings. So because of the, the amount of negativity surrounding humanity nobody can sit to do their goodness and good deeds, that's the danger is that people become surrounded by the negativity. That's why I say, don't listen to these other you know teachings and, and these other people and they said, oh is it allowed to listen to, to other scholars? You can listen to whoever you want but it has to be benefiting your soul. So things that would bring doubt and, and they have such a lack of understanding that it's immensely sad that how much Allah has given, how much power we have, how much ability we have. And that just to know from the energy level that there's immense negativity around us so that we have to have all of the, the tools that Allah gave to us. So are you playing the salawats in the house and for fortifying the house? Do you have taweezes on the windows and on the walls? Do you have a taweez upon yourself? All of these fortifications and are you really in a mode of battle? You know for a believer not to be in a battle mode with shaitan and just to be like a, a student of shaitan or victim of shaitan then it's not acceptable. And that's why those people have no understanding and they become tools for shaitan. And they use their kalimah, they use their acceptance into Islam as a means to divert people from the belief of Allah And that's Surat Al-Munafiq and Surat 63, they use their entry into Islam as a means in which to divert people from the protection of Islam and the protection of Islam is the love of Sayyidina Muhammad So amongst the dajjal and deceit, dajjal for us is not anti-Christ because we have nothing to do with Christ, dajjal for us is deceit. So deception, this whole system because if his foot is here according to our teachings, his foot is right now into the earth moving. 
Well then that's why we're describing his deceit. So everyone on Instagram is deceitful, that's not them, that's not their face, that's not their, their products, that's not their life. We're talking about 99% of these accounts. Why? Because this is deceit and he is deceit and his government is deceit, is lies. So when it comes to Christ, of course it's all lies. Anything they're teaching that has to do with Christ, it's all, all lies. The heavenly kingdom is no tailgate parties and, and drinking and, and nightclubs. So it means that this world is now just filled with deceit. And the Islam that they bring with the red tablecloth from an Italian restaurant on their head, that's deceit. That Prophet never wore that, didn't want a man to look like he's wearing a hijab. And the crown of Islam is the turban and you don't see them ever wearing turban, they wear hijab. And Prophet didn't like that because from behind you don't know if this is a woman or a man. So that way is not the way because of deceit. The, the teaching of their teaching manner is deceitful and the key to victory is the love of Sayyidina Muhammad So these are already here, everything that we're seeing of social media is deceit and that's the system that he's in place. So it's a matter of understanding all of that and everything around that's deceitful. And the way of truth and the way of realities is, is only through the way and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad inshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Sayyidi, can Islamic calligraphy manifest things as well? What is the reality of calligraphy? Well, we talked about that in many talks about the alam bil qalam. Because we have a power of kun fayakun. So this whole world is manifesting right now with our kun fayakun. So one guy was sitting on an island and he began to write because Allah controls the heart and makes him to write. So he first drew a circle, then somebody build a circle. Then he drew a building and then somebody build a building. So all these people drew all that we have all around us is now popping up from where? That's kun fayakun, be and it is. That is the power of manifestation. So what humans are capable of manifesting of what they put into their heart and what they put into their desires, then that's what is, is astonishingly powerful. So when they're inspired, no doubt, as soon as they begin to write for the Qur'an, write Salawat al-Nabi there's an angel attached to every letter. And everything that has of a goodness Allah attaches angels of goodness to it. And then those letters begin to manifest for the servant. And that's why we said those people don't have that belief, that everything has a manifestation. So when you write Allahu Haqq and you write the names of the shaykhs, what angels are attached to them? And if this is coming from the secrets of malakut and heavens, then it's coming with an immense light and power. If the negativity can do it, you don't think the positivity is more powerful? That everybody can make a horrific uh, image and they feel the badness of it. And then those whom are doing and writing the good and writing the heavenly and reading and opening Holy Qur'an, all of those have immense lights, immense powers. And that light when you surround it by yourself is a protection for your home, when you put it onto your being is a protection for your being. And when you have it all around on your car, your property, your home, those lights are what push away shayateen because they see the light and they burn from that light and they don't want it, they don't need it, they go to the next home. So that's what she, and then those people who teach against that because they work for shaitan, take these things down. Oh that's convenient, you took that down and now you've disarmed everything for shaitans to enter. 
So heavenly advice comes from heavenly people. Heavenly people they represent the Sultanate of Sayyidina Muhammad So then they should look and act and have the character of Sayyidina Muhammad But when they represent shaitan they have the satanic character that narani, fiery, angry, everybody going to hell, everybody punished, everything is wrong. Prophet never talked like that. So that's the difference. <clears throat> As salaamu dear Sayyidi Walaykum As salaam wa rahmatullah. Is it possible to remove or undo all the negative pictures we have seen from our mind? <clears throat> to undo all? Mm, Allah knows best, but to, to clean the heart is important. So that we one, stop looking at bad, stop looking at uh, negativity and to begin to purify the gates of the eye. Then by the use of water, when they sit in water and they meditate and they see themselves whirling in the water asking that Allah by the power of water to burn away all of the badness like a cleansing of the hard drive and they begin to try to clean their heart from the visions and what the eyes have sort of accumulated. <coughs> if they are consistent with that, their zikrs, their madad and all of their practices then begin to burn all of these images off of the heart. That's why we said the power of madad is a satellite mirror. What you can clean is very little compared to making the madad, focusing on, on the, the presence of that mirror. When that mirror is present it's like a sunshine that burns through everything <clears throat> and that burns through all the, the bad character, that burns through all the bad actions. And it's so powerful that Prophet described that one hour of tafakkur is like 70 years. So that's when we described before, these things you contemplate, what does 70 years mean? Means that if you did one hour in a tafakkur and contemplation and really connected with that mirror, your life as if you went somewhere like the speed of time and you traverse 70 years in the company of that shaykh or that, that reality in which you connected to. What light did it dress you with? What knowledges did it convey into the heart? All of these realities then are the depth of tafakkur and contemplation. And imagine, and, and, and imagine then the amount of cleansing that happens in one hour of tafakkur is like you cleaned yourself for 70 years <clears throat> in every aspect. So it's not you just hear the hadith, oh one hour is like 70 years, what does that mean? 70 years of what? So one hour tafakkur is as if you sat with him for 70 years and did what? Did zikr, did your breathing, did all the, the light practices because it's from malaku, it's not from the physical world. So 70 years you were dressed with their light. So these are, these are you know immense, immense realities of, of the, the holy hadith of Sayyidina Muhammad inshaAllah. Welcome, dear Shaykh. Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah. Since Allah tests those whom He loves and also we are <coughs> advised to pray for ease, so what does it mean if we have ease in our life? Is it our du'as answered or that we aren't those whom Allah loves? <laughs> yeah, again, you know, this is like these philosophy things, don't worry. If, if yeah, everyone knows to the extent of what they're practicing, means that when we look at our life and we say, oh I want to put only my toe into this ocean and then you, you, you have to know that you only put your toe into it. But when you have that in your heart that, no I want to jump into this ocean, then you know when you're jumping. And you know that when you jumped in and how you're doing your practices and what types of testing are coming because we are the people who live that 
So we know when the testing comes. So there are people who are still just you know putting their toe and think it's a little bit chilly, it's a little bit warm, maybe I'll jump, maybe I won't jump. So then they may feel that there's an ease but once they jump there's no ease. They know they're in it, they're doing it, they're practicing it, their life is filled with testings, their character is being tested, people are going to agitate and aggravate them and they're going to get angry, they have to control their anger. They're going to have many things that come towards them and, and, and many testings and by virtue of those testings they're being cleansed and cleaned and so it comes from every direction, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Can we use visual, visualization to help us manifest goals? Yeah, like that book, they visualize a parking space and then they go into it. <laughs> yeah, so there, there's, a, there's a fine line and that's why the tariqah comes to teach us that don't use your, your heart's manifestation for dunya because then you'll be allured in that direction and it'll always be for dunya. And that's why the tariqah comes to teach all of their teaching that if you can manifest and you can put your heart's desire into something, then put it into the desire of Allah put it into the love of Allah and say that, oh I want to be under your, your love and under your, your rahmah and mercy and the shaykh is teaching me then I should have the love of Prophet and then I, I want to be a lover of Sayyidina Muhammad I want to be a Loza Sharif, I want to do my durood, I want to do my my milad and I want to attend. So you begin to now put the manifestation power towards the heavenly reality. But if I just sit and say, oh yeah, make me to be like the best uh, business guy, make me to have like all of this, let me to make have this and let me to do this and let me… then before you know it you, you didn't have that balance and you will quickly go on the wrong direction. But once you fixed first your connection with Allah and with Prophet establish that love, establish that connection, establish the connection with the shaykh, that's why we said with the boat. Once you're strong on your connection, the boat they can bring back up at any time. So shaykhs are balanced. They're poor in the way of Allah but they're not poor. Because their balance and their connection then Allah sends them sustenance from ways that nobody could imagine so that they can do what they have to do in Allah's way. But to reach that level is not first focusing on dunya and they say, oh no, no when I become a very successful person I will then come and do something for Allah. Um, that's not true because many people sat on the carpet and dunya came and they ran and they took it and they ran with it. So the tariqah comes to teach, that's why Surat Al-Kahf is teaching, first attain your rahmah that connect with the love of Prophet and that's by the lovers who are the shaykhs and the guides. The guides who love Sayyidina Muhammad good with them, connected with them, locked on, got my teaching, got my awrad, strong with my practices and that's where my, my manifestation will be, I manifested that love. They describe it's like you have a garden and in that garden you have like a door that you believe so much as a door is this door is to the heavenly presence. When you believe it Allah makes that door to appear for you and by virtue of that door you walk through it and you are exactly in the presence that you wanted to be in. So that power you want to focus on that not to, to, to build the dunya but once you have that connection then Allah brings the dunya back up for that servant because they are connected and they are required then to have a sustenance in which to accomplish what Allah wants them to accomplish inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum respected Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa If we watch a lot of TV series does power of manifestation also cause problems to manifest in our life? Yeah, fine line for everything, right? Everything you watch is manifesting in your living room. So people are, are kind of scared with the things I watch. Say, so, oh, your shaykh, how you have all these things like this, say, yeah, because I can deal with that. 
but you can't. So you have to be careful what you watch. So there's certain people if I sit and watch a horror movie with them because I want to understand what shaitan is trying to teach people, propagate to people, what sort of things he's bringing out. But somebody very sensitive will begin to feel that and feel the shaitans coming through and those creatures that are in the shows coming through. So no, these are all very real manifestations. You have to be very careful what you watch and, and what type of shows you're watching. Then how are you cleansing the space? Are you playing salawats in the house? Are, are your practices strong? Do you have a room in which you have dalal al khirat and all your practices? So the shaykh's presence and arwa and the soul is something else because they're in the reality of cleansing all the time. But for a lesser understanding or someone entering in, they have to be careful for what they watch, what they hear, just sounds. You know the, the music that's being played today manifests very horrific energies. And that's uh, Prophet had warned us about that reality. So these energies that are coming out they have a very horrific reality and they bring down the vibration of everyone who listens into it. And that's what it's meant to be because shaitan knows the secret of the ears. So when we teach meditation we say, meditate, connect your hearts and listen to salawats. Why? Because the angelic reality of salawats it brings the soul out. <coughs> when you bring the soul out then you can enter into a hall very fast. And it's, it's doing that by the power of the tafakkur <coughs> and, and the power of the salawats. Well, shaitan knows that too. So then he plays these horrific sounds that what? That darkens the soul and brings the nafs out, not the soul. So the venom is coming out, the demon is coming out and all the demonic desires are exactly in the words of that song. And the demon inside is, is liking those words because he, he's united with that understanding. So the demons become strong and eventually when they listen too much to that they begin to have those characteristics. So you have the same people that are south side LA in, in Japan, the same character, same everyone looks like a rapper from uh, Los Angeles. Why? Because the sound and the character and the attitude all manifested into the people who listen to it. And that's not a coincidence, it's exactly what shaitan wanted to happen. So that they empowered their most demonic desire, most demonic characteristic and then that overtook them. So same for tafakkur is that when you manifest the beatific and heavenly and angelic reality it will begin to make your angelic reality very powerful. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Okay, we have till 9.30 inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam uh, Can you please talk more about the two jinns that are still alive today, the names on the Taweez and what is a good jinn? Who? <laughs> the jinn are alive, <laughs> all of them are alive. Their lives are a thousand, two thousand, three thousand, four thousand years. So the, there are jinn sahabi on this earth at all times. They accompanied the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad And there's jinn masjid in, in, in uh, Hijaz that they're all there and they're all sahabi. But the, the, the ones whom are from Ashab al Kaf. InshaAllah they are present and their, their, their training is, is important for tariqah and last days. That their knowledges and their fayas and what Allah has given to them of gifts and realities and that will be of use in the last days to protect from all the destruction and difficulties and sicknesses that will be coming to the earth. So alhamdulillah that our only necessity is just to make our tafakkur, our contemplation and our connection with the shaykhs. And as a result of that connection they work from behind the scenes. So they don't, nobody has to call upon something that they're not familiar with, they have to only connect with what they see. 
And it's the most difficult to make the connection. That's why when we keep talking about the madad people are more like, can I connect with the tree? Can I connect with the mountains? Can I connect with the ghosts? But yeah, those are all the ones that the nafs is trying to run away from the real connection which is the connection with the shaykh. Because that energy comes, the fires comes and then in the connection the people become aware of all the things they're doing wrong because it's a mirror of truth. That when somebody sits by themselves, with themselves they can fool themselves. But when they make their tafakkur and their contemplation that's a mirror of truth that comes that begins to teach them, don't do that, do this, don't do that, don't think like that, don't talk like that, think like this, do like this. So that is hard on the nafs. So the nafs said, why you don't just focus on the mountain, why are you going to look for these people? As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa How do we survive the fire of purification especially as newcomers to tariqah? Survive the fire of purification? InshaAllah just keep coming. Keep coming doing your zikr again make the connection that to, to visualize the connection and, and that, that light enter into the heart. And hold fast to the shaykh, build the relation with the shaykh, build the relationship with the communication, help me at nurmuhammad.com. All of that is like holding tight. As soon as you hold tight you make your meditation, make your contemplation, the connection is growing. And when the connection is growing then becoming more and more solid. So when difficulty and testing comes they feel that they're being helped and held and that's what we need to get through the difficulty. <laughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Sayyidi, there's so many different salawats, <coughs> which one should we play? There's so many what? So many salawats, which one do we play? Any of them. All of the salawats are immensely powerful but like when we say play salawats it's play the nasheeds. Get some beautiful Arabic nasheeds and just play them. We have Dalal Khirat playing, most of our homes have Dalal Khirat is playing on SoundCloud we have all the playlists. So you take a Dalal Khirat or you take a playlist of the nasheeds and play it in your house. And you put it on all of these wireless speakers and have salawats playing into the house, the house becomes of an angelic energy. And anytime people are coming from school with negativity and from work with negativity it's a cleansing because that energy is, is just sort of emanating from the home and all the negativity then has to disperse and, and to leave. And then we wash, we clean, we have our taweezes, we have all of these protections so that to keep ourselves always in a, in a positive energy and in a positive environment inshaAllah. And the house becomes a cave, a cave of safety because inside that house is filled with the love of Sayyidina Muhammad inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam How to know if we are right or wrong when in confusion going on in the mind and heart? How to know that you're wrong right or when wrong. you're in confusion? How do you know for right or yeah. wrong? Yeah, anytime you think like on a, on a subject if I'm right or wrong you, you do the meditation so that you connect your heart and connect your heart with the, the shaykhs and asking that, that get, grant me a clarity, grant me an understanding. You start to make your salawats, you slow down, you breathe and then you should begin to hear an inspiration within your heart that what was the other side, what was happening, what are all the realities of the situation and you get a more balanced understanding of of why you reacted to something, what the other person's reaction was, what their intention was, what the feeling was. So more clarity comes through issues when people can learn to slow down and meditate and contemplate and connect their hearts. And that's what the hikmah and wisdom is. When they become attuned to that then they become wise because every time they connect they get a, a deeper understanding of why this person's reacting like this and why this person's trying to react like that. So then that's the whole reality. The shaykhs are like uh, doctors or, or spies of the heart. 
So every every movement, every action, every word is a is a diagnosis for the shaykh that certain characteristics are coming, certain personalities are trying to appear, certain sicknesses are now developing. So that's the importance through their tafakkur, through their contemplation, through their connection they have this hyperactivity or hypersensitivity. As a result of that they can begin to sense when sicknesses and difficulties and characteristics are coming because their life is like a lion tamer because they're dealing with the, the wild nafs of people and could be thousands of people. So they're continuously sort of bombarded by all of these realities. So they have to be hypersensitive and this is something that Allah gives to them of an understanding on how to deal with people because they're not dealing with just the person, they're dealing with the, the intention of the nafs of that person which the person himself doesn't even know or she doesn't know that that's their intention. So they're dealing with a hidden enemy that's hiding itself, that thinking it's hiding itself from the shaykh but can't. So th this is just all the training and all of the, the practices so that the heart has clarity, the, the heart has its light and its understanding to reach towards that reality inshaAllah. So, wa rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifun wa salaamu ala mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen ya li sharif al nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa 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 alayhi wa sallam w